to be, yeah, yeah, not, or not yeah, they deny what, you what you're actually feeling, but to start where you are and to say, okay, I don't see it that way. I can't even imagine ever seeing it that way if that's where I feel like I am. But I can say, okay, but it sounds good. I mean, I would like to come to a place of being able to see more clearly because I, I feel that the way I'm seeing now is a confusing mess. I can't make sense out of it. And I've tried everything and nothing seems to work. And if this sounds like something that I want to approach, all the Course says is aim in that direction. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep aiming in that direction. Mm -hmm. You're going to take steps toward it and you just have to keep remembering, oh yes, that's what I'm aiming for. I'm not, you know, I may, not, I may feel like I'm not anywhere near it, mm -hmm. but I just want to aim in that direction. And then it doesn't sound like there's a million miles to go. And for me, it's, I feel so much joy in a sense that it is possible. Mm -hmm. you know, As you I approach mean, it yeah. and it becomes more, gets more in sight, then yes, that feeling comes. Right. But even, even to look to someone that can mm -hmm. share that experience yes. with me is very supportive and very encouraging right. to me. Because if one person has experienced it, and actually it's not a person that experienced it, if there is one experience of it, mm -hmm. then that can be my experience. Yeah. And the ego, though, would, would personify it and say, say one person, person is experiencing it, and since I'm not experiencing it in the same way, I must still be guilty. So there you go, it puts you right back, you know, where you're denying that you can even look at projections, whereas the Holy Spirit's saying there's no person here, it's an experience that we all already have, and you can have that if you take a look, like what we're doing here, mm -hmm. but not to jump or leap or bolt into the image that you think personifies yeah, the experience, that's mm -hmm. because that's what the ego says, see, you couldn't do this, who are you, what do you think you are, you're just a little nitwit, you know, or a person who's materialistic. Look how materialistic you've been all your life. Now, how could you possibly, you know, look at this in a different way? So. That's the tracing back. That's why, if, as I said earlier at the beginning, you know, if you've had, had thoughts at work or if you've had thoughts during the day, if you've had, I used to call them the, the top 40, you know, the revolving <laughs> top 40 that would go around and, you know, there'd be like a problem area, maybe in here, financial or relationships or something. It would kind of just revolve around, like the, like they used to play on the radio stations, you know, where they'd have popular songs and they would go through the day. Mm -hmm. And you, if you listen to the radio station, you'd hear it come around, come around again and again. But those are the things that are really important to look at. Those predominant thoughts, those little things that just seem to keep coming back, that don't seem to get resolved. The mind seems to just want to hang on to those problems. Those are really helpful. And, and the examples that we've had in our other meetings that you brought up have been very helpful in that tracing back because you can see that's where you have to start. You, you have yeah. to start with how I feel. And it really is important not to, not to try to conceal too. I think in, that was an experience that Adrian came up a lot where people initially came, we went into some metaphysics and so on and so forth, and then like people started sharing some of their experiences and the ball started rolling and people started saying, well, okay, it's not personal. So-and-so is jumping over there and I'm going to dump mine under the table and pretty soon it was like there was a lot of dumping on the table and a lot of laughter when you can trace it back and see, oh, it's just the ego. I don't have to worry about getting into comparing and where do I rate and like the things you were talking about. It's just a gratefulness, I mean, a surge of gratefulness to say, wow, it's so neat to be able to start to look at this stuff finally with some lightness instead of judgment. Mm -hmm. You begin to feel some resolution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's just, it, it, it is transformative. Mm -hmm. I still want to get a little more clarification of that in the sense when I, you know, 
heard you expressing your pain to fly around with different beings, that you still, on, on some level, are recognizing one another as all part of the So in a sense, there's a reality beyond, behind each person. Yes. Okay. Behind the veil is the reality. Right. So, because I, I think I get... I feel myself getting uptight when I hear about the screen and how it's all illusion. But there is truth beyond that illusion that we are all part of this one mind. Yes. Okay. So it takes more than that one mind. We each have to to come to the understanding of the Course in its fullness in time as we perceive time. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, no, 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 be clear. We still each have to, to see the full picture. We can't, it's not, not Jesus actually didn't do it, he was the first one to do it, but we each also have to do this. Well, remember that time when we had our discussion where I was saying, on the, on the side of the world, that's, that's the way it looks. Okay. It looks like Jesus. Right. <laughs> and then it looks like others have to follow, so it follows Jesus, so to speak. And everyone in the sonship has to remember who they are. But, again, on the other side, it gets more of what you were saying, is that, is that it is a, a hallucination or a projection. And coming to the clarity, coming to right-mindedness, everything. When you come to clarity and right-mindedness, then the screen disappears, so you can see that there isn't. It seems to be a process, an individual process from within the dream. We're one right. by one. Yeah. Within okay. the dream, that's the way it's Right, going. and when you make, when that one person makes it to the other side, they, they no longer see that separation, and that doesn't, in a sense, matter, but aren't those people there doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really dead to it. That's, that's a big, that's a big, yeah. but see that's again, yeah. that's the thing of, of, that's why it works down to real simplicity of like, okay, if, if you really work it down to it's always my lesson, yeah. that is where it boils it down. Then it, there is no everybody. As soon as you get out to the everybody or to the we, then you have the collective, and believe me, I get a lot of questions on the collective. Mm -hmm. where but didn't you just say that Jesus thought, did it. It was the first. It was the first. Yeah. But yet we're still here. Right. So here's, it's, it's that ladder again. That's the metaphor. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, that's helpful, you know, to, to go around to people and to say, you know, it's all just a hallucination, nothing, <laughs> or whatever, that's, that's pretty right. steep. That's going for the top of the ladder we without, got there. without some to run. Do. You ever try to climb a ladder where there's only the top rung in there and all the other ones are out? <laughs> you can just go like this. <laughs> but but you're yeah you're getting hold of it. We're going to get into this too. Is that thing of metaphors and that that definitely is a is a is a run on the ladder. It's a metaphor. How is it the truth then? It isn't. No. It's that. No. Metaphor meaning like <laughs> or as. Yeah. <laughs> but not <laughs> a is. Reflection. A reflection yeah. Yeah. or a stepping stone, but not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not is. It so, is. So, you know, we had a talk today even about forgiveness. Forgiveness is still part of the illusion, right? But yeah. it's a stepping stone that we need to get to the light, or however you describe it. Was, that was helpful, because yeah. we seem to think that forgiveness somehow is the truth. It's not. Because it's the one illusion that yeah. leads out of illusion. Right. Yeah. Right. In your 3D demonstration you just did, and, and the far side from me represented, you said, clarity or right-mindedness. And from that side, there isn't this side, even perceived. Is, is that well, I would say... I have a question about yeah. that, but right is, is that clear? Right-mindedness is still perceptual. That's what I was going to say. So, so isn't well, that one-mindedness well, that's on the other side instead yeah, of right-mindedness? Yeah, in a sense, yeah. one-mindedness would be equated with our... Uh, we had that um, diagram that was outside the circle. The diagram of the mind? Yeah. That's the third mind? Yeah. In other words, this is our diagram here, and 
this is the world and this is the wrong mind, and since ideas leave not their source, they were really identical. The world's just the screen, and, and the, the wrong mind is, is the ego belief that, that originated the screen. It's all within the wrong mind. And this is the right mind. So, in other words, what we were, what I was just describing like this, we're not, it wasn't like this was the wrong mind over here and the illusion, and this was the right mind, but this would be the wrong mind. This, the paper itself, you might say, <laughs> is the bridge, or the, the right real mind. world, or, or the, the right mind. And then, <laughs> heaven, heaven. Well, the whole. Every, what is, yeah. Is, yeah. is heaven. And there is no, of course, there is no world. Mm -hmm. There aren't any bodies. There isn't a, a first to awaken from the dream, or a last. There's there isn't no time. a dream. There isn't even a dream yeah. in heaven. So that's a, that's a good question, because it, to even say that about Jesus, you know, on one hand, it's, I was, when you went out to move your car, I was just reading this little passage from the 83 in the teacher's manual where it's talking about Jesus and um, it third says... Third person, right? Third person. I suppose it's different than what you were saying earlier. Yes. And it was saying, um, the name of Jesus is the name of one who was a man but saw the face of Christ and all his brothers and remembered God. So he became identified with Christ, a man no longer, but at one with God. The man was an illusion. I read that one a couple of times. I remember one gathering in Michigan, and I heard a <laughs> with a gap. <laughs> this, don't go to Catholic Mass and read this. Please. <laughs> don't do that. Out loud. Not, not out, out loud, loud anyway. <laughs> don't read it out loud. The man was an illusion, for he seemed to be a separate being, walking by himself within a body that appeared to hold his small self from capital self as all illusions do. Yet who can save unless he sees illusions and then identifies them as what they are? Jesus remains the Savior because he saw the false without accepting it as true. And Christ needed his form that he might appear to men and save them from their own illusions. So Jesus is just a symbol and in, in the sense of even saying that um, Christ needed his form Again, we're not talking about the Christ. It's, it's another metaphor because the Christ that I have on my chart is out is is with God. Christ doesn't have anything. To, he doesn't even know about the world or the dream. He's just in this eternal song with the Father. So again, it's another metaphor. That Christ needed His form. It's, it's a stepping stone. It's the way you're saying it, and the way it's coming across to me right now, then Jesus was the Holy Spirit. I mean, to us, they, that answer that was given us during the separation. Yeah. There's a manifestation of it. In other words, the Holy Spirit's in the mind, mm -hmm. but in the world of form on the screen, that Jesus was the manifestation mm -hmm. of it. He, the words that he spoke, all of his actions, all of his demonstrations, was kind of as if the Holy Spirit could take a form mm -hmm. and was moving the puppet, like moving the Mary yeah. And we're given that answer mm -hmm. the same time that we created separation, and that, mm -hmm. that was Demonstration. Yeah. And what he's saying is that that Christ mind is in all of us, and the Holy Spirit works through all of us and can do the exact same thing if, we're, if we align with the right mind. Right. But how is, is he, Christ taking form and, and us taking form different if it's all illusion? It is exactly. In other words, the most you can the most you can say with Jesus is. That, that is a story. It's another story. Adam and Eve was a story. A story of Jesus and the apostles. Some people can say, well, Adam and Eve, it wasn't a real story. That's a symbolic story of the garden. But Jesus, he was a real person who really lived and really had 12 apostles. But you can see from the, we're getting deeper and deeper that that, again, is a symbol. Mm -hmm. Those are just images as well. That image of that body of Jesus is like a feather. <laughs> okay, but how is that different from all of us? It's, it's not, not. It's not. It's, it's not, not different at all. Right. It right. seems, right. if you're identified as a body and a person, though, and you relate to behavior mm -hmm. instead of everything yeah. just a bunch of feathers and images, then you can see where that would be helpful. helpful. Okay. And that's the only way that you can really look at it in a clear way and, and not personify the Holy Spirit, you know, and think, I, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the 
the Father, but through me, if you interpret.